Good afternoon, everybody. Andy White here. What you are about to hear is, of course, the fusion of heart, mind, and soul. And I want to welcome everybody from all across the fruited plain and all around the spherical globe. Thanks for tuning in to this week's edition of Open Up the Doors. Hey, do me a favor. Let me know if you are listening and go on over to my Open Up the Doors Facebook page over at facebook.com slash facefm91.7. I am streaming live over there on my Open Up the Doors page. So if you're joining me over there on, on the page, and please let me know where you are watching from. Join in the conversation over there. If you've never liked the page, please like the page. And as always, I'm looking for an interactive experience here at Open Up the Doors, and I need this I need you to do help that. I can only interact if you interact with me. So shoot me some comments. Shoot me some statements. Shoot me some things you might like to uh, input as the broadcast goes on and as we progress. And I'll try and uh, address any of your questions or share any things that you'd like to share over there on Facebook as I ever so often look at the comment stream. We are streaming on the Internet all over. The Fruited Plain, all around the spherical globe, or at hamptonschristian.com. If you are outside of the Faith FM broadcast area, the best way to listen to Faith FM is to download the free apps. You can get the, the, free, the free apps for Faith FM over at Google Play for your Android device. Of course, at the Apple Store for your Apple device. We have them for all those platforms. And it's a great way just to listen to all the great uh, programming here on Faith FM uh, 24-7, the apps, of course, are free if you are outside of the Faith FM broadcast area. If you'd like to email me, you can email me at ajwhite777 at icloud.com. And one more thing before I move on is I have a Parler account. You could follow me on Parler also at ajwhite777. Please uh, follow me over there on Parler. I'm doing I'm doing much more interacting over there on Parler because... Uh, just Facebook is becoming so restrictive and so censoring and so uh, just throttling down all the posts. Um, enjoying the freedom. I really am enjoying the freedom over there uh, on Parler. So if you haven't signed up for Parler, I would recommend it. And again, you can follow me there at AJ White 777 Well, let me move on with the show. It's October 1st. Can you believe it? October 1st, 2020. And, <laughs> well, what I want to do for the program today is kind of a little, little bit of a mixed bag. I think to some degree, maybe. I'm going to give, uh, in a few minutes, my analysis of the uh, the first presidential debate that, you know, when was that, Tuesday night? Because after this week's first presidential debate, of course... Now the, the the campaign season really, really is kicking off, and it's heating up majorly. And, you know, I title all my broadcasts, and I didn't know whether to call this broadcast today Red October or Dread October. 
<laughs> Maybe it's going to be both. I don't know. You'll understand what I mean as we move along. But it's going to be one heck of an October, no doubt about that. Will, will America continue to raise the torch of liberty or will we buckle under the raised fist of anarchy and tyranny? Really, that is what this this presidential election is about. Now, I do want to say a few things before I get into my analysis of the debate that I think is going to be important. There are, in my estimation, there are two extremes when it comes to President Trump. There's one extreme that can be rightly deemed a Trump cult, where he can do no wrong and where his supporters look to him like he's America's Messiah. The Trump cult has a religious fervor to it which borders dangerously on idolatry. Now, I know that might offend some of you, but that's how I see some of it. But there is another extreme. The other extreme are those who are suffering from a terrible acute case of TDS, Trump derangement syndrome, where Trump can do nothing right and where he's become a completely psychotic caricature in the minds of those afflicted with TDS. They have abandoned all sense of rationality and reasonableness. And extremely, and I'm serious, I'm not, I'm not even trying to be funny here, because I've, I've, I've dealt with this in people, but an extremely acute case of TDS renders one without the ability to reason to the point of making excuses for lawlessness and malfeasance and justifying the wicked. It really is a mental disorder. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that lightly. I do believe TDS has become a mental disorder. And few have seemed to be able to recover from it dangerously still. And here's, here's the real thing. Dangerous. TDS is dangerous. Because those who remain in that state, and I'm talking to Christians. Like I said, there's two extremes here. But those who remain in their, in their state of TDS... In this delusional state, their spirit begins to rot in them. I've seen it. And they will gladly trade whatever is left of their liberty for tyranny and authoritarianism because they have made their their, 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 um, feelings against Donald Trump to be, to, to be one of hatred. It's truly, it truly is, um, a mental disorder. Now, I'm saying all this, I'm saying all that to say this. I do not consider myself to be part of the Trump cult, nor by any means, um, by, not by any means am I suffering from TDS, quite the opposite. I consider myself, honestly, to be in the rational middle of those two extremes. Now, most of you have been following this broadcast for, for, for years. You know Four years ago, I did not support Donald Trump. I did not vote for Donald Trump. I didn't believe he would be a conservative uh, leader. I did not believe he would appoint conservative judges. I did not believe that he would uh, be pro-life. I believed he was scamming everybody. I did not believe four years ago that he would change. So I voted for a third-party Christian candidate. Donald Trump proved me wrong, and I'm glad he did. I said four years ago, I hope... I said four years ago that, if, that, that I hope that I'm wrong about everything I see about Donald Trump as far as him, his policies and being a president. And if, he, and if I'm wrong, I'll admit it. Well, here it is, four years later. And I'm glad I'm wrong. I'm glad I was wrong four years ago. So I am supportive of Donald Trump this time around, and I will be voting for Donald Trump this time around. But again, I'm saying all that to say this, because my analysis of the debate is going to be my analysis. It's going to be what I observed, what I felt watching it, what I thought, and what I witnessed while watching the debate. Now, I know some of you may not agree with the things I'm going to share. That's okay. It's going to be an analysis of the debate. And I'm trying to be as honest and fair-minded 
as I can be. Before I get into that, let me say one more thing regarding the polls. Because the polls are essentially really irrelevant. Four years ago, for the presidential debates, the polls showed Donald Trump losing every single one to Hillary Clinton. So he won the presidency, thank God. So the so the polls the the the, the post poll debates the, I mean uh, the uh, post debate polls excuse me they're really irrelevant and the media saying that Trump lost the debate should be considered as already being baked into the cake so ignore them like I said he lost every debate last uh, last time around too so they're meaningless now I want to bring in my analysis first i want to go into some general thoughts and then i'll get into some of the particulars but first i i I want to in general and i think it's pretty obvious i think really to 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 state the obvious the debate as a whole it was brutal (laughs) it was just brutal it was chaotic it was divisive and when i was writing down my notes watching the debate from the very very first moments of the debate and i'm just jotting down words as 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 you know talking points for my or thinking points i should say for 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 what i wanted to discuss for this broadcast and i wrote down brutal chaotic divisive and then it dawned on me that this was a reflection of where our country is right now it, the debate was a reflection of where our country is right now. Now, many will, on the left for sure, will blame that on Donald Trump, but that's just their projection because they're the ones who never overcame their loss from four years ago. My opposition to Donald Trump four years ago was never personal. See, those suffering from TDS, their opposition is personal. Mine was mine was on policies. And again, like I said a moment ago, he proved me wrong, and I'm glad he did. So my my opposition to Trump was never personal. And my analysis today is not going to be personal. It's going to be observational about how I felt looking at it. And I felt that Trump was overly aggressive. I felt that he really did need to stop constantly interrupting because he did it from the get-go. I noticed it right away from the very start of the debate, and it was making me groan because he didn't have to do that. He's got a good record now, and he didn't have to be uh, overly aggressive. He didn't have to be uh, what, what, what the caricature is. See, I, I felt that he was playing into the hands of his opponents with, with their caricature of him being a bully. So I was, I was, I was getting a little bit, uh, what's the word I want to use? disappointed with the way he would he just was out of the gate interrupting because i think with trump's overly aggressive interrupting i think it hurt him i really do it didn't hurt him with the base but there is people in the middle who are on the fence and i think it it hurts him when he does that and i'm saying this to help him i'm saying this not to be critical but to cr- cr- critique like a co like a coach because it played, again, I'll say it again, it played into the media's caricature and narrative of him. It played into the hands of his opponents, and I think it was a bad tactic. And I heard from some people that it was a tactic. I heard from some people that Trump was doing that on purpose. He went in, his mindset going into the debate was to try and get under Joe Biden's skin by doing just the things he was doing. But you know what? He was getting under my skin. I don't think he was getting under Joe Biden's skin all that much. And I think if it was a tactic, it failed. And I'll get to that later. You see, when you're debating someone, and again, this is an analytical coaching sort of a thing. I've, I've, been, I've been in a lot of debates in my life. My friends call me a debate waiting to happen. And when debating someone, you need to listen to what they are saying so you can rightly refute it. If you keep interrupting them, it'll just turn into an argument. See, Proverbs 18 says this, he who answers a matter before he hears it, it is folly and shame to him. 
So I, I think Trump's constant interrupting, I really do think it hurt him. That, that's, my, that's my opinion on, 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 on that aspect of it. The other thing here is it wasn't, it's, it, those, those forums are not Trump's best forum. The next debate, I understand, is going to be a, a, town, a town hall forum. I think he's going to be much better in that kind of uh, uh, situation because Trump is not a skilled debater, and he loses his focus too easily. He, he needs to – he really needs to have measured – well thought out responses. Now I know that's probably not his style, so maybe it's just really tough for him. I don't know who is coaching him for the debates, but he really does need to have measured, well thought out responses, so that when he hears what the what the opposition is saying, he can go bang, 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 bang. He's got a great record, but he's he's he, he's not a skilled debater. He's just not. He's undisciplined in his debate skills. And because he's undisciplined in his debate skills, he didn't take advantage of some really good open opportunities. For example, when asked about racism, which you know is a canard, you know it's a trap, but still, okay, play the game. When asked about racism, he went on about law and order, because I know that was, that was his focus. He just wanted to talk about that. But when you get so myopic in your focus, you, 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 you could lose the forest because of the trees or is it the other way around. I always get that the saying messed up or you lose the trees because of the forest. The bottom line is this. He messed up an opportunity. When asked about racism, he, he went on about law and order instead of talking about the bills and the programs he passed for black Americans. Instead of talking in broad generalities, he should have ticked off the list of the very specific accomplishments, like the prison reform bill that he passed, that the Dems have talked and talked and talked about for years, but never got it done. Trump got that done, that prison reform bill, and it's helped black Americans. And there's other things that that he should have just been right on top of. That whole, that whole exchange regarding critical race theory, which but those words weren't even used, but should have been used. But that whole exchange regarding critical race theory was a train wreck because Chris Wallace utterly, Chris Wallace utterly mischaracterized the government program that Trump put a stop to. When he was grilling Trump on, Mr. President, why did you stop the racial sensitivity training? Critical race theory is not... Race sensitivity training, Chris. And either you are woefully ignorant, which I don't believe, or willfully deceptive. And that kind of disappoints me because I do have some respect for Chris Wallace. Now, a lot of people I know have been beaten up on Chris Wallace to some degree, maybe rightfully so. But listen, when Trump goes in front of uh, anybody from from NBC or MSNBC or CNN, they're going to be far, far worse. So as 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 much of as much as the criticism that's being aimed at Chris Wallace is, I, I think he had a he had a hard enough job. He was trying to rein in cats. And Trump was was not, you know, honestly, listen, I'm in the president's corner. I know I'm going to get beat up because I've seen the comments and everyone was like saying, oh, Trump did great. and He had to do that. I just don't agree. For that debate, he needed to be less of a boxer. He needed to be less aggressive and he would have come across better. He would have gotten his excellent record across better instead of arguing with Chris Wallace. And I understand there was a lot to argue with Chris Wallace about. Especially, like I said, for this critical race theory, it was it was it was a terrible, terrible exchange there. But again, because Trump can be so undisciplined, he missed. I feel like he missed a lot of good opportunities. Again, when Biden faulted Trump for the lockdowns, which is insane, Trump needed to remind people he didn't do it. I'm I'm just shocked that he didn't do it. When, when, when Biden was going after Trump for the lockdowns and for the economy crashing, Trump should have immediately reminded people that it was the governors that did that, not Trump. The lockdowns and the, and the, the, the lockdowns and the crashed economy is by no means Trump's fault. But Biden and the media and the Dems, they want to make Trump look like he's incompetent. 
Now, of course, we know that's definitely not true, but that's their game plan. Now, I did think, because I don't want to be all negative here. And again, I wasn't trying to be negative. I was just, again, just analyzing what I was feeling and seeing in the most fair-minded way I can. I thought some of Trump's finer moments were when he turned around to Biden and said, I got more done in 47 months than you did in 47 years. It's a great line, and it's true. You know, when, when Trump turned around and, 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 and said, and, and said to, uh, to, to Joe Biden, what police unions are supporting you? And there was dead silence. Now, that, that was priceless because you rarely see that in a debate. The, the, the opponent will always usually have some other kind of comeback. And Biden just hung his head down like he was just stunned because there are no police unions supporting Biden. In fact, right after the debate, another su- police union uh, supported uh, uh, Donald Trump. Trump was also very much correct about the forest management problem, too. But Chris Wallace kept wanting to bring it up, bring in the whole climate debate thing. But because of the interrupting and, and the, the argumentative spirit, again, Trump brought up a lot of important issues. He really did. But Wallace wouldn't follow up on them because of the demeanor of Donald Trump. I hate to say that, but there, again, it's just, it, it becomes it becomes a vicious cycle because that in turn caused caused Trump himself to become more interruptive. It caused Trump himself to be all over the place then, and he became overly defensive when he didn't need to become overly defensive. He needed to talk up his accomplishments more than he did in a positive manner and not in a defensive one because he's got a good record. Now I know with the way. Chris Wallace was was asking the questions the way he was framing the questions. He was he the questions were framed in such a way that they were favorable to Biden and everyone was picking that up. And and Wallace didn't press Biden to answer some very important questions. He just like when Trump asked about packing the court, you know, Chris Wallace should have followed up on that. He should have made he should have made Biden give a yes or no answer and he didn't. Biden, you know, I mean, again, like I said, this 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 debate was brutal. I've, I I saw things I never saw in a debate, and I mean, we're talking about Trump. We're talking about all the debates he had back four years ago. You thought you saw it all, you didn't, because here we have Joe Biden telling the President of the United States, "Oh, shut up, man! Will you shut up?" Wow, me and my wife were just stunned when we heard that. I mean, they're always talking about how Trump doesn't sound and look presidential. Well, that certainly wasn't. Joe Biden called Trump a clown. He pl- now, Biden was playing into his base. And so he was making himself. You know how you know how how, how we've been told from the Democrats from day one that they're going to take the high road. They're going to take the high road. Well, no, Joe Biden got down and got, got down and dirty, just like, quote unquote, Trump did. He called him a clown. He called him a man who always lies, which was hysterical since Joe Biden told at least 30 lies in that debate the other night. Joe Biden told him to shut up. Joe Biden called him a clown. Joe Biden said he was a man who always lies. Talk about the pot calling the kettle black. But while here's the thing. There were in there were at least 30 lies and mischaracterizations given by Joe Biden in that debate. And sadly, Chris Wallace, and again, this disappointed me because I thought Chris was better than this. Wallace never challenged one of them on Joe Biden's side, but he kept challenging them on Trump's side. And not one of Joe Biden's answers to any of the questions, not one of them were substantive. He refused any direct answers to yes or no questions, and he simply used uh, emotional and manipulative appeals. Biden was just effusively obfuscating on every issue. And Chris Wallace just refused, it seemed to me, to go after him. Certainly, he kept going after Trump. It was very unbalanced that way. So I could understand how a lot of the the, the super Trump supporters were really disgusted with that. It was just a really bad debate on on pretty much on every level. 
But whether Biden was 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 questioned about Hunter and he kept denying, oh, it was debunked, the whole Hunter Biden thing, it was debunked. No, it wasn't. In fact, it's getting worse. There was a perfect opportunity for Chris Wallace to go after Hunter. I mean, I'm not after Hunter, after Biden about about that whole Ukrainian thing with Hunter. And he didn't. And then Biden denied that there was a new a, a green, a, a, a green new deal collaboration with with Bernie and AOC. That was an out and out lie. You can go to you can go to to uh, 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 Joe Biden's campaign page and see where he's talking about the Green New Deal. But he denied that he was supportive of the Green New Deal. It's right on his Web page. Biden lies, but the media will only go after Trump. That's simply par for the course. And I think it's to be expected. Now. I got a lot more here, and it's. Uh, I got a lot more here. Let me see before I take a break where I really want to go with this. I, I think let me let me let me finish up this first section by saying this. I, I, I've been saying for, for 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 many months now that this election must be about policy over personality, or we will end up under tyranny. We cannot allow this election to be about personality. We've got to take the distractions of the personalities out of the question. Liberty or tyranny, that is the choice. That is what your vote will mean. That is what you will be voting for, not Trump or Biden as an individual, but the worldview they represent. Trump's positions and policies have for the most part been good and right but for many people, his personality drives, uh, drowns out his accomplishments and the beneficial things that he's done. And that's a shame. But again, we've got to lay aside those personality quirks. I heard Steve Dace say this. It really comes down to this. You have to decide if what you don't like about Donald Trump is worth turning the country over to communists or not. That's it. Nothing more and nothing less. Stick around. I'll be right back. Here's a tune by Andrew Peterson called Rest Easy. I'll be right back, folks. Andrew Peterson, rest easy, you're already mine. That's such a sweet, sweet tune. Welcome back. Andy White here. You are listening to Open Up the Doors here on Faith FM, WEGB 90.7 and 93.3 in Epic, WEGQ 91.7 in Quag. And the views expressed by the host of the show, namely me, are molded by the word of God, along with the empirical evidence, both experiential and observational, which is lived out on by me on a daily basis. And my views may not necessarily be the views of Faith FM or its associates. That sounds so official. But I got to put the disclaimer in. If you'd like to discuss my views, you can always email me at ajwhite777 at iCloud.com or hit me up on Parler. Follow me on Parler. Same place, ajwhite777. Well, I want to repeat what Steve Dace said to, to launch into my second block. Steve said this. It really comes down to this. You have to decide if you what you don't like about Donald Trump is worth turning the country over to communists or not. That's it. Nothing more. Nothing less. This is October. And as I've been thinking about these things and wondering about these things and listening to the different prophetic words that have been coming forth the last several months, I thought about the Bolshevik Revolution, Red October. I think most of you here know all about Red October. Red October is a reference to the Bolshevik Revolution. The Marxist communist Russian Revolution led by the Bolshevik Party of Vladimir Lenin that began in late October of 1917. The Bolsheviks gained control of the government, which led to five years of civil war 
and the creation of the Soviet Union. Let me say that again. The Bolsheviks gained control of the government, which led to five years of civil war and the creation of the Soviet Union. The Red October coup uprising brought forth 70 years of slavish communism to the former Soviet Union, Russia. Now, I ask this question rhetorically, of course, but are we possibly, here in America, are we possibly in the throes of our own version of a Red October? Will we allow socialists and Marxist communists to gain a foothold in our country to move from their ideas? Ideas have consequences, by the way, Mr. Biden. I'll get to that in a moment. But are we going to allow them to gain a foothold in our country to move from their ideas into a place of actual political power? Think of how Biden dismissed Antifa as, quote unquote, just an idea. Americans had better wake up and realize that we are sinking into the quicksand of full-blown communism. We are literally hanging by a thread. A month ago, Sock Puppet Joe, that's what I want to call him, because that's what he's going to be. When he stood up the other night and said, oh, I am the Democrat Party, I laughed. When Trump kept challenging him about the socialists and the radicals who were controlling him, and Biden just said, oh, I am, no, I'm my own man. Oh, I, I, there are my policies. He's just lying. He's a sock puppet. The radicals have taken over the Democrat Party, and they're, and, they're, and they're manipulating Joe Biden. He would not be the nominee if he did not go into an agreement, arrangement with AOC and, 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 and Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders was, was winning. Remember back in February when I talked about the Bernie Sanders campaign that was really taken off, and no one thought, no one thought that Sleepy Joe was going to be able to hang on. No, there were some backroom dealings going on, my friends, because they, their wheels started turning and they started really realizing, wait a minute, we can get Joe Biden out there because, you know, he, he, he's, he, he, he's an elder statesman in a three-piece suit, but we'll just control him. We'll just manipulate him. So a month ago, sock puppet Joe added Pete Buttigieg to his transition team to help the planning for a new administration in the event Biden wins. Do you remember Pete Buttigieg when he was running for, when he was campaigning for president in the primaries? Pete Buttigieg is an Antonio Gramsci sycophant. Who is Antonio Gramsci? I'll remind you, Antonio Gramsci is the is called the father of cultural Marxism. It was Antonio Gramsci who said socialism is precisely the religion which must overwhelm Christianity in the new order. Socialism will triumph by first capturing the culture via infiltration of schools, universities, churches, and the media by transforming the consciousness of society. Hello, we are there. Antonio Gramsci, Gramsci said this way back, I think it was in the 1920s or 1930s. Pete Buttigieg's father is a, it was the, is the president, or was, he passed away, was the president of the, of the Antonio Gramsci Association. Buttigieg, Pete, Pete was, was raised and brought up with, 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 with the, uh, the philosophy of socialism and the teachings of Antonio Gramsci. Pete Buttigieg's father translated into English the works of Antonio Gramsci. So now he's part of Joe Biden's transition team to help in the planning of a new administration. My friends, Joe Biden may have been a moderate in the past, and that's what they want you to believe, that he's still a moderate, but he's a weak, faltering sock puppet for the radical left today. And despite his denials in the debate, he has embraced Bernie Sanders' socialist health care plan. He has embraced AOC's Green New Deal. He even stated that he would put her in charge of his of his of his of his uh, environmental and climate control agenda. Oh, but he he but he's not he doesn't agree with the with the Green New Deal. He lied. Biden said at the debate, no, I don't support the Green New Deal. I support the Biden plan. This is a quote. I support the Biden plan I put forward, which is different than what Trump calls the Green New Deal. That was an out and out lie. Go to his website. It's there. 
Biden said that he would put Beto O'Rourke in charge of his gun control policies. Oh, excuse me. I mean his gun confiscation orders. He's got all the Marxist ducks lined up. In the debate, when Trump was calling on Biden to denounce Antifa, Biden retorted that Antifa is not an organized militia. That was another lie. They're very organized. Have you seen the pictures? Or are you just in denial? But, but, but Biden said that Antifa is just an idea. It's just an idea. So is Marxism, communism, and fascism. They're all ideas. And ideas have consequences. Historian... Uh, historian author R.J. Rambo wrote this, of all religions, secular and otherwise, Marxism is by far the bloodiest. In practice, Marxism has meant bloody terrorism, deadly purges, lethal prison camps, and murderous forced labor. This is history. This is truth. Rambo writes that Marxism has caused fatal deportations, man-made famines, extrajudicial executions, and fraudulent show trials, outright mass murder, and genocide. He writes that in practice, the Marxists saw the construction of of their utopia as, quote, a war on poverty, exploitation, uh, imperialism, and inequality. And as in a real war, non-combatants would unfortunately get caught up in the battle. There would be necessary enemy casualties. And these are what the these are who are named as the necessary enemy casualties in Marxism. The clergy, number one, the bourgeoisie, the capitalists. And as in any war, millions might die, but these deaths would be justified by the end. To the ruling Marxists, the goal of communist utopia was enough to justify all the deaths. Have you been listening to what these anarchists have been saying? To what Antifa has been saying? And I'll say it again. The radicals have taken over the Democratic Party. And their candidate, Joe Biden, is a marionette being played, excuse me, and being pulled by their strings. Mark my words, friends. If the left wins the election in November, the radicals will be in control and the Republic of the United States of America, as you have known it, will be over. And that is exactly what they want. They hate America as it's been constituted. Don't fall for the lie that we're all patriots who love America. No, they are not. They are neither patriots nor do they love America. They have stated time and time again that they want to fundamentally change America. You don't seek to fundamentally change something that you love. Nikita Khrushchev said, we cannot expect the Americans to jump from capitalism to communism, but we can assist their elected leaders in giving Americans small doses of socialism until they are suddenly awake And they'll find out they have communism. I hope to God, brothers and sisters, that it doesn't come down to that. But I'm going to say it again. Welcome to October. And we're hanging by a thread. I hope it doesn't come down to that. General Michael Flynn wrote an article this past week. I'm going to close this block quoting him. He said, being hopeful is not a survival plan. Hope has never won a war, nor will it win peace on the home front. We cannot hope to shut our eyes against the painful truth that our very existence is once again in jeopardy. Failed Marxist ideologies have invaded the mainstream of our consciousness like a network of choking vines seeking to strangle the mighty American oak tree. General Michael Flynn. I'll say it one more time before I go to break. There are only two candidates running for president, but their names are not Donald Trump and Joe Biden. No, one is named Liberty, and the other is named Tyranny. Stick around, I'll be back for more. With more, here's Lincoln Brewster. Today is the day.
Fusion of Heart, Mind, and Soul. This is Open Up the Doors with Andy White here on Faith FM for EGB 90.7 and 93.3 in FB. It'll be EGQ 91.7 in Quag. Happy October, everybody. Today is October 1st, 2020, and what a, what a year it's been. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's going to get even better and crazier. Welcome back, everyone. Praise God. Hey, I am uh, streaming live. If you're just joining me, if you're just tuning in to the broadcast now, I am streaming live on my Open Up the Doors Facebook page over on Facebook.com slash FaithFM91.7. Please go on over to my Open Up the Doors Facebook page and like the page if you've never liked the page. I would also invite you to please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Go over onto Google and just do a search, or your, if you have your YouTube app, just search for Andy White, open up the doors, and I would appreciate so much. Got to get got to get the subscriptions up there on YouTube. Um, I would just really appreciate it. If you have not subscribed to YouTube, my channel, please do so. Just hit the little subscription bell. Right next to the bell is a little uh, a button, I should say. Right next to the subscription button is a little bell. Tap on that bell and you'll get notifications of when these edited and produced broadcasts from Facebook Live are uploaded to the YouTube channel. We want that place to be a, 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 the channel to be a place of resources for you. Uh, all of these broadcasts are archived there and other creations from our videographer, our video producer uh, creates other, you know, gospel related messages on video that you might uh, enjoy and things i've liked you can go over to the, to the like section and see sermons of that i've that i've posted there from from different people like david wilkerson and others different things that i've liked that might be a resource to you the whole point of the the uh the youtube channel is again to be a resource for people so i i would appreciate it so much if you could subscribe to that all right, what else do I want to mention here? My Parler account, I, I follow me on Parler at AJWhite777. All right, where am I? I got a few minutes left here. It's October. Oh, I like October, actually. October, November, I like the fall in general. I say this every year when it comes to fall. I just like the fall. I like the fact that the air is getting less humid. I hate humidity. I like the fact that I could, I could, start, I could start firing up soon. I haven't done it yet, but we're going to start firing up a wood a wood stove very very soon been getting the wood pile ready been splitting up the wood getting it stacked up getting it ready because pretty soon those frosty nights those frosty october nights will be upon us soon so that's no surprise but i do want to talk a little bit about an october surprise you know the october surprise it's always something that happens in october right before an important election that, that that phrase, the October surprise, was first coined by William Casey, who was Ronald Reagan's uh, campaign manager back in 1980. In American political jargon, for those who might be listening to this overseas or all around the spherical globe, an October surprise is an American political jargon, which is a surprise that is created in in the news media as an event deliberately created to deliberately created deliberately timed to influence the outcome of an election so here we are october 1st 2020 a year that has been anything but normal we're living in such crazy times and we need to be ready for anything we need to expect the unexpected to be sober to be alert and even as i shared with you a few weeks ago that we need to walk circumspectly for the days are evil and these are strange times so are we ripe for an october surprise a bombshell that just drops before election day probably who knows anything can happen now one thing that i want to highlight i only got a couple minutes left i got a really long article here let me just highlight a former cia uh agent wrote an op-ed wrote a column and he said this he said in this article that he wrote this guy's name is uh, retired cia officer sam Fattis, who spent decades undercover working in the middle east and south asia and he said this the left the left's communist revolution doesn't care about elections many americans have seen the rioting the looting the attacks against our police 
the continued assaults against Trump supporters, and the endless violence that has torn the soul out of many of our cities. And Americans don't like what they're seeing, but they don't really understand what they're seeing. The beginning of a revolution that will proceed regardless of who wins the November election. Translated, that means if you're someone who thinks you've got to put Joe Biden and the Democrats into office in order to get the to, to get the rioting to stop, this guy says, think again. It's not going to stop. They have an agenda. Oh, man, I'm running out of time. He goes on to say, we are we, we are not experiencing a wave of social unrest generated by injustice or police brutality. We are watching an insurrection in progress, one which uses police violence as a pretext, but which has its as which has as its goal the destruction of the existing social, economic and political order in the United States. Exactly what I've been saying for months on end now, what I've been saying. These these groups are being are being sponsored by powerful people and if joe biden wins they will look to him as their puppet and accelerate their revolution if he refuses to go along he will be discarded as well those are ominous words from a cia a- agent this is not about reform it is about revolution and revolutions don't care about elections Fattis concludes folks there is a marxist philosophy, the Marxist literature that goes back to the 1920s, even in this country. They talk about how they were going to use race and sow division and divide people in order to destroy this country. That's exactly what's been happening before our very eyes. I need to tell you in closing, most of you know this, but I'm going to really, really stress this. Marxism is an evil antichrist philosophy and system. And if you think that this is just about politics, you're already losing the war. Resistance is not futile. And we must stand up. We must speak up. And we must resist the zeitgeist. Or we will see the end of our liberty and our freedom. In the meantime, brothers and sisters, I'm out of time. But watch. Stand fast in the faith. Be brave. Be strong. And let all that you don't do be done in love. 